In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make a generic musical instrument shape to fit on the 5-5 piano. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to open up 2Design. This, this is the program we're going to use to put all our bits in here. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to set out how much room I've got. Okay. Now, at the moment, this is a full board, and we're allowed to use a third of the board. Okay. So I'm going to go up to the top to where it says Setup, down to Drawing, across to Layout. I'm going to change. Now, on yours, you may, it may come up like that. You're going to click User Defined, and we're going to change this so that it says um, 200 so I'm changing both both the X's to 200 and I'm going to change the two Y's to 300 and that's going to give me a third of one of the, the main pieces of board that we use for the um, laser cutter okay so that's a third of the board that's where I've got to fit my, my shape into Okay, I'm going to quickly save that. And I'm going to call it my 5 of 5 uh, piano case. Okay, now obviously it doesn't need to be a piano, it can be anything you like. It doesn't have to be a musical instrument, again, it can be anything you like. Um, but this first part of the video was just show you how to um, do the skills, and then you can just follow that along and obviously change it as you go along. Okay, so the second thing I need to do. Is I need to get a template. So I'm going to get a template of the actual circuit board. So if I go to Start, uh, File Explorer, and I'm looking for the Open Drive and Design Engineering, E8, 555 Piano, and then there are the 55, I'm uh, sorry, the Piano Board Template. Now the idea of what we're going to use this for is we're going to set it to 100% and then we're going to take a kind of copy and paste it into 2D design. Now it does something a little bit weird but it should give us an idea. Now if you notice as I zoom in, here we go, you can see these these um, blue circles, they're all 3mm, these are going to be our mounting holes. So what the idea is we're going to make a board that's going to fit onto there just a couple of mil all the way around the outside, okay, maybe sort of 3 mil around the outside. Okay, and we're going to put holes in here, here, and here. Okay, so that that can actually be bolted onto that board. What we will do as well, we'll put a really large hole in here so that the battery snap can fit out the back. Okay, so I've got that open. These are the blue bits that I'm looking for. This one here, obviously, we're ignoring that one because that's where the battery leads. So down at the bottom right, check it's on 100%. Really important that it is, otherwise, you're going to have the wrong size. I'm just going to copy that. Okay, so Control A, Control C, or highlight, right click, copy, however you like to work. Into 2D Design, right click and paste. Just make sure on the right hand side, I'm going to get rid of um, step lock. Now, will it fit width ways? It's not going to, so I need to rotate that. Using the, the sort of um, the four on the outside, I can do various different things. This one here is rotate, so I'm going to spin that around so that's pointing straight down the way. There we go. Okay, all right. So, what I need to do is I'm going to draw a box around that. So it's going to be a box for cutting, so I'm going to change the colour to red. And I'm going to pick a, a rectangle over here. And I'm just going to draw around the outside of that as neatly as I can. Okay, and that's, that's going to be the board that we're going to cut out that the, the, the PCB can be mounted to. And then what we'll do is we'll mount this board onto our actual final shape. Okay, so the second thing I need to do now is I need to put on those holes for where the where the circuit board has got the holes. Okay, so I'm going to go over to here to the circle tool, hold that down, and go to the second one across, which has got this circle with an R on it. It says, draw a circle with a given center and a radius. Now, I need to half that, because obviously it's 3 mil diameter, which is going to give me a 1.5 radius. I say okay. All right, so I now have 
All right, these circles, I can put them wherever I want to. Now, the problem I've got is, let's try and zoom in a little bit, but I think what's happened is, yeah, somehow or other, from going from one file to the other, it's managed to move, lose the blue bits, okay? So I'm gonna kind of do my best that I can to put them in. So let's have a look. So if I go back to the template, let's see if we can figure this out where it was. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so the holes, are uh, sort of where that line's coming down the way. Uh, it's kind of in the middle there, maybe a little bit to the towards the, the rest of the board. Okay, so I want to try and put the circle in in line, maybe right in line, in fact, actually in line with that end piece there. Okay, so I want to see if I can do that. So back to my 2D design. And uh, okay, so there's that that bit we were just looking at there. Okay, so I need it to be in line with there. So I'm going to put one in there and I'm going to follow that line up straight up there straight up there straight up there and I'm going to put one in there okay so that's my two holes for there let's have a look at the other side so the other side of the board the hole is right in the center and it's in line with that middle pin and the center of its kind of where would I say that was just below so just in the line of the diode so I find that diode line down and the line of that middle pin for the pot. Okay, so let's see if we can find that. So I'm just scrolling here. So it was the middle pin for the pot there. And if I just walk that up, so it's the center of it's on the line with that line of the diode. So I reckon I can maybe zoom in a little bit more. It might help me see what I'm doing. Okay, so it's in line with that middle pin there, straight up and in line there. I would say that's pretty good there. Okay, so I've now got the hole, or sorry, three holes, okay, there and there. I do want to put one more hole in, and this is going to be a really large hole. That's for the battery snap. So I'm going to hold that back down again. Oh, in fact, actually, I'm going to have to click the black arrow and then back on the circle. So I was going to put the large circle in for the battery snap. So I need to go, so let's just check what did I do there. So I went back to the black arrow, hold that one down again for the circle with the given center and point. Click on there. And I want it to be 13 mil. So what's half of 13? I reckon that's um, six and a half. Okay, so six and a half mil and say okay. Now this one I don't need to be quite so accurate with. But because uh, it's the, let's have a look, where is it going to come? The battery snap is, let's look at the right end. Yep, so the battery snap's down here. So if I plonk it just sort of underneath the 5 of 5, just about there, should be fine. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've done. I'm going to click on the image now, and I'm just going to delete that image. Okay, so I should be left with this rectangle that's got three, three mil holes and a 13 mil hole. Okay, so that's my first thing. I'm just going to save that again. All right, this is going to be my, my backboard. All right, now what I need to do is make choose which kind of instrument I want to make. So I'm just going to type in, let's go to Google Chrome. I'm going to make like a little guitar, ukulele. Okay, so for this, I'm just going to be doing that. Obviously, this will be the same with whatever instrument or whatever object you're doing. So do continue to keep watching, and I'll show you what you need to be doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up Google and I'm going to do an image search. Um, oh, I'm just going to type in Ukulele. Let's see if I spell this right. Okay, I'm going to select images. Now, when I'm selecting the images, what I really want is I kind of really I want to draw the the edge of it. So if I can get so, so photos like these are no good for me. I want something really kind of ideally black and white. Ideally, really, really strong, so I can see exactly what the outside is. So, if I go to clicked on images, models, and I'm going to select type, I'm going to try clip art first of all, see how that looks. Okay. And I'm also going to go color, and I'm going to say black and white. Okay. So, if I look down here, I've got various choices. Um, that would be fine, I think. Uh, that looks like it's got a nice solid line around the outside. That would work okay. 
uh, that would work quite nicely as well okay what wouldn't work things like this can you see where there's a gap there and a gap there if i do a contour it's going to contour around here and through the middle and just sort of lose that bit out so you want something sort of nice clear i'm actually going to use this one here because i think that looks quite nice so i click on there um i'm going to go copy image go to design right click and paste okay so size wise that's okay it seems to have liked the farm sometimes your images when you bring them in will just be completely black okay if it's gone completely black it's not going to work go back pick a different color okay so what do i need to do with this image well the first thing i need to do is i need to vectorize it the vectorize it means turn this series of little dots into a series of instructions so the computer can understand what to do with it okay so how do that go to bitmaps at the top vectorize bitmap click on the image and i'll choose monochrome now you have got a sort of slidey bar here so you may want to move it up and down it might make a bit of a difference it might not in this one it's doing very very little okay um word of warning with this for some reason whenever you put the slidey bar it all does come a little bit darker than you think it's going to be so if you're moving it there and it looks okay it's probably worth just moving it a little bit down before you push the button okay for some reason it always makes it darker than it appears to so we say okay and okay again and now i've got that image okay so this the computer can actually do something with okay if you want to see exactly what it's done if i select it and to start edit you'll actually see these are the individual dots it's made up of okay that can be quite useful if you want to remove something to eat something okay because you can actually select parts okay so for example if i want to get rid of that hole in the middle i could select that and say delete node and that will actually remove that there okay uh which actually i think i might do because i just want that outside shape really so i'm just going to put that and there you go see got rid of that circle and go end edit all right so i've now just got that nice solid outline okay so next thing i need to do is i need to contour that now have a quick look at the size of this how many fit that in there well let's have a quick think i'm going to try and scale it up as much as i can first so to do that hold down the shift button around these corners and you can sort of move it up okay and i'm going to try and make that as big as I can on my page okay but make sure you're holding that shift button down otherwise sort of squash and stretch it where you don't want to do that okay Now, I think I am going to have to, despite me saying about squash and stretching, I think I am going to have to sort of stretch this a little bit wider. Let's see if I can move this object here. Now, what we'll do with this object here, because at the moment it's actually made up of one, two, three, four, five different things, I'm going to grab all of those like that, okay, and I'm going to go Control and G, okay. What that does, that groups it together. So if I move that, all those five things rectangle and falls all move as one okay so i'm just going to try if i can make this a bit bigger the it needs to be wide enough that that's going to fit on there right, let's have a look and see how that looks will that fit on top there Okay, need to go still a little wider. Oh, a little bit too wide. Obviously, I don't want to go over the edges. And I go a little bit higher up there. Okay, so my ukulele now has filled that space. Okay, now what I need to do, I'm going to vectorize this and I'm going to squeeze the two things on at the same time. Okay, so to vectorize it, I'm going to use the vectorize tool, which is over the top left hand of the toolbar here, about halfway down the right hand side. It says contour. Click on there, set it to zero, and say OK. Make sure you're on red still. Yep. And I'm just going to click just on the outside of that shape. You'll see it's now drawn a line around it. I'm going to select my black arrow. Hopefully, select the middle of that, or in fact, I'm just going to grab it and put one one side and one the other side. OK, so that's the bit I want. This is the bit I don't want. Okay, so I'm going to click on there and delete that. Okay, so I can select that now and place that over the top of there. 
Okay. Now I think what I have to do here, I've not picked a good shape for this, but this is good because obviously you can see where there's where problems can be. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bring the make the piano piano. What's this? Sorry, guitar ukulele. So that bit smaller. Okay. Because I do need to get both of these things on at the same time. So move that right over there. Okay. But what I will need to do is I'll probably need to make the neck thicker. So I'm going to try seeing if I can stretch it a little bit that way. As far as I can go. Uh, I'm just going to check again whether that's going to fit. Um, let's move this down a bit. Because I really want to use as much of that... Um, the board that I've got. Okay, you've only got a third of a board, so you might as well try and use as much of it as you can. Okay. So again, I'm just going to sort of size up to see if this will fit on the top of this, because obviously this is going to be cut out. You're going to put the board onto here, and then this will attach onto the back of here as well. Okay. Now, let's have a think. So bring that across again. So it's got to go kind of in the middle there, or you can go all the way down here, depending on where you want it. But obviously we need to have some material around the outside. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that there. I'm actually going to change the shape of my guitar and make it a little bit thicker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a, a line, make sure it's in red, and I'm just going to draw it from there down to there. Okay, and this one I'm just going to come in here and come straight down to there. Okay, so now what I can do is I can put that board back over there at the way and then I can edit these bits out. To edit bits out, hold down the delete any button, come across the second one across which says delete part of an object between two nearest the two nearest two intersections, my teeth back in, and I should be able to just delete these bits here. Okay, so I have changed this, the shape of my guitar slightly. Okay, it shouldn't make too much difference to the overall idea. Okay, and then that's going to fit out there. Okay, now obviously at the moment, if I attach the board to there and then attach it to there, I'm not going to be able to reach the buttons. So I need to cut out a space on here so that we're going to be able to access the buttons. All right, now I'm just going to quickly measure the board so we know exactly how big we need the uh, thing to be. Okay, so the board is 20 widthways by length. Fifteen. Okay, so I need to make a box that's 20 across by 15. Now obviously to give myself a little bit of wiggle room, I want to make it slightly bigger. So I'm just going to draw over here. Okay. Now it's quite difficult in... Um, let's see if we can... Okay. So to make a, um, a box the right size, I'm going to have to use the dimension tools. Okay. So right hand side of my toolbar, it says dim lines. I'm going to go just draw from the left to the right and up. And I'm going to go from the Stop to the bottom and try and be as accurate as you can. Take your time when you're doing this. I know I'm rushing a little bit. Okay, so at the moment that's the size. So what I can do if I highlight that, so I'm highlighting the box and the two dimensions, I can just move those across. So I want it to be approximately 20. Okay, so um, if I can get it something like 20. Point um, that's probably fine actually. 20, so that's basically 22. So that gives me two mil of wiggle room. That's fine. And I'm just going to move the up the way. Again, about looking for about 150. If there's a tickle more, that would be fine. So 147, 142. Again, that's going to be fine, isn't it? 152. All right. So there's my object. I can now delete the two dimension lines. And I can put this back into place. All right, so I'm going to put that about there. Okay, so it's going to cut out my shape, cut out the segments so the but I can reach the buttons, 
and then this piece is going to go on the back. Okay, now obviously if you want to put any writing on there to make it a little bit more sort of special, a bit more like yours, to do that if you go to where on the left hand side, halfway down the left hand side, it says ABC. Okay, click where you'd like to do some writing. Um, I'm going to write uke uh, power or something like that, or ukulele power. Okay, or you can write on there whatever you like. Okay, say okay. Now obviously I can click on the writing, I can resize it by just grabbing the sides, I can move it around, I can change the font, you can put your name on there, anything you like, just something on there so that's ready to go. Okay, when you're happy with that, save that. Obviously that can be emailed to the laser cutter and then we can get that cut out. Hopefully that has been useful.